Hello, I'm Ollie and this is Criminally, where I talk about crime, pulp, horror, that kind of thing. Today, all of this, I'm going to talk you through all the books I read in February. So February was a was a pretty good reading month for me. Um, 18 books read in total. Only one five-star read out of those 18, though, which is kind of below average for me. I look back and I think I had three in January. Um, so it wasn't the greatest month in terms of my um, enjoyment of the books, but, um, you know, still quite a fun month. And, of course, included Garborgus 1.5, The Wasted Weekend, um, in the middle of the month, which was a, an absolute blast. So I really, really enjoyed that. Um so, as I say, 18 books read. So in terms of the things I'm kind of tracking against, so my 50 books I'm, I'm trying to read before I'm 50, I've now read 17 of those. So I've got 33 to get through in the next two months. So in March and April. So we'll see how, how I fare on that. Um, and then my um, 100 book challenge, my Rebought Your Own challenge, I'm up to book 75. So I've read 75 books I already own. Um, I've got 25 more to go before I can start buying books again. So we'll see We'll see how I get on with that. But I think there's a... Well, both of those should be finished by the end of April, basically. Um, so in terms of how I did against the TBR, I set myself at the beginning of the month. Um, I actually ended up moving two books out of my list for the month and bringing two different books in. So the two that got moved out are Deep Water by Patricia Highsmith. So I'm doing this read through of all of Highsmith's books with Anne Novella. Um, we agreed we'd do that one in March instead of February. So that got moved out. And then also Cunning Folk by Adam Neville, which I was going to read in February. I'm now going to read that with uh, some of my patrons in March instead. Um, the two that came in, I will talk about as we go through this uh, this this list of books, but they were uh, Aliens Vasquez by V. Castro um, and Burglars Can't Be Choosers uh, by Lawrence Mock. Um, so normal format for this then, um, I will talk through the books I read in order of enjoyment from least to most. Um, so this is not an objective uh, an, an objective assessment of the literary quality of the books. It's purely down to how much fun I had with them, basically. Um, so we will start at the bottom then. So my least favourite book of the month is one I was expecting to enjoy. In, indeed, going into the month, I thought it might end up being my favourite book of the month. Um, it was not. That book was Geek Love by Catherine Dunn. Um, so I have done a review of this, which is up on the channel, uh, where I talk about my, my feelings about it. But yeah, it just didn't live up to my expectations. And interesting book uh, that explores some interesting themes um, but yeah it, it 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 just didn't quite work for me I didn't get involved in the lives of the characters as much as I needed to to, to really get enjoyment from the book um, next then we have Endless Night by Richard Lehman which is one of the books I read for Garbogus 1.5 so you know I, I have a, a, a strange relationship with Richard Lehman I like his book sometimes other times I don't this had some stuff I really liked in it so some really good scenes of suspense and things like that but also some very unpleasant scenes that just felt just felt unnecessary and it just feels like Lehman's too into it basically um after that then, uh, in terms of uh, the rankings, uh, Strict Players by Donald Goins. So this is the second Donald Goins book I've read. Uh, I preferred the first one, which had a, a stronger plot. So this one has some really interesting characters. It's a book about uh, kind of pimps and prostitutes on, on the streets of America. Um, but yeah, the, the, the plot was was lacking somewhat. So interesting characters, some, some great kind of richness and a, a decent sense of place, but... Um, yeah, not as enjoyable as I was hoping. Um, after that, um, another book I read for my Disturbing Books project uh, that was Haunted by Chuck Palahniuk. Um, so again, I've done a review of that which went up on the channel this week. Um, so a short story collection. The short stories I really liked, but there was a load of fluff around the short stories, kind of linking them together and things like that. And, and that part of it I didn't enjoy. Um, so it was a bit hit and miss for me, really. Um, yeah, the short stories, as I say, some of them were excellent. Some of them were really gross and disturbing. Uh, but overall, the book didn't really work. Um, something completely different um, next then. So Kansas City Cop by Julie Miller, which again, I read for Garb August. So this was a lot of fun. So a, a romantic suspense novel um, about a, a female cop 
um, who's been injured in the line of duty um, and her relationship with her physiotherapist while she's also trying to solve the mystery of, of who shot her as well as another mystery as well so uh, just a fun light entertaining read um, yeah definitely recommend it if you're in the mood for that kind of thing um, just ahead of that another one I read for Garb August uh, so this is Casca God of Death by Barry Sadler the second in the Casca series of books so I definitely need to read the first one um, just really interesting really fun so Casca is this character who's a, a Roman soldier who's been cursed to live forever and gets involved in various wars so some interesting kind of flipping backs and forwards through time um, and some really good action scenes just very silly but really quite interesting Today. Um, right, a few Kindle ones um, ahead of that then. Uh, so um, next up we have Midwich Cuckoos by John Wyndham. So I liked I liked a lot about this book. It was quite exciting at times. It's, it's got some interesting concepts in it. So a book about a strange event that happens in this English village and the effects uh, on, on the women of the village who all mysteriously overnight become pregnant. Um, and you know what happens thereafter and famously it's been filmed and there's like creepy kids in it and stuff like that so there was a lot I liked about it but I did feel it was quite dated it was a bit too kind of sedate and it didn't make as much of the kind of horror of the situation as it might have I thought um, so I was slightly disappointed by it I really like uh, Day of the Triffids by Wyndham this I thought was not quite as good as that um, just above that we have Cabin at the End of the World by Paul Tremblay so this is a book I read uh, with my patron. So it was our first Patreon book club pick. Um, it was uh, it was really exciting for the first the first kind of half or so. It was just fantastic, um, and it's a book you can't say too much about without spoiling it. But basically, it's about this this gay couple and their adopted daughter who are away, you know, staying away in this cabin, um, and some weird people turn up at the cabin, um, and things get weirder and weirder as it progresses. Um, so there's some great suspense in it. There's great kind of teasing out of the mystery of what's actually going on. The central characters are really well done so that the couple and their daughter are both really well, you know, well-rounded characters, really convincing. And some of the, um, the kind of other characters are quite rich and interesting as well. But I just felt like it was a book that stretched itself out too much and the ending um, definitely left left me feeling disappointed um so yeah uh, and not not as good as i expected it to be um just ahead of that then so another one i read for my disturbing books project child of god by cormac mccarthy um which was elements of this were fantastic it's it's a so a story about this kind of outcast who lives on the edge of a um a town in uh west virginia um the dialogue and things like that in this book are excellent. So the prose is really interesting. It really it's really immersive. It really pulls you into the story. Um, this guy is basically a serial killer and does some some really horrible stuff. So there was definitely some disturbing elements to it. Um, but I was just left with a bit of an overwhelming feeling of so what at the end of it. Um, so I have done a I have done a review of it. As I say, parts of it I thought were excellent, but overall it didn't didn't fully work for me. Um, just ahead of that, something completely different, So Long and Thanks for All the Fish by Douglas Adams. So just a wonderfully enjoyable comic sci-fi novel. Um, this is the fourth in the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy series. I liked it uh, more than any of the books other than the first one. Um, so I think the first one's great um, just because it's so, it feels so fresh and it introduces you know, the, such wonderful characters and things like that. The middle two lose their way a little bit, I think, particularly the third one. This, the fourth one, just has, a, has more of a plot than, than the middle two books. Has a lovely kind of romance between um, Arthur Dent, one of the main characters, uh, and a female character he meets. Um, it's some very funny moments. Just a really sweet, nice book. It was, uh, it was a, a very pleasant read. Um, just ahead of that then, so from this Library of America uh, Women Crime Writers book, um, The Blunderer by Patricia Highsmith. So again, a book I'm reading for that project I'm doing with Anne Novella. Um, so this was an interesting book about two guys um, and um, some murders, basically. Um, so an, an interesting uh, examination of kind of psychology of, of killers. Um, 
And there was a lot that was good about this book, but I felt it was too similar to Highsmith's first book, Strange on a Train, and wasn't quite as good as that. Um, the first chapter is fantastic, where there's this, this brutal murder. You don't really know what's going on. You don't really understand who the characters are. And it's really, really effective. And it then becomes about, a, about the kind of relationship between these two guys, one of whom is is the murderer from the first chapter, and the other of whom is is a guy who um, is in a, a a relationship that he's not happy in, um, and he's thinking about you know what he might do about that, shall we say? Um, so yeah, it, it, a lot of similarities with Strange on the Train, and, and I thought Strange on the Train was was the stronger book, so I'm slightly disappointing as a result. Um, just ahead of that, another book I was really looking forward to. I didn't love it quite as much as I hoped I would, uh, but it was still very good. Uh, that book is Aliens Vasquez by V. Castro. Uh, so this was a buddy read for me with MJ from the channel Reading This Life. Um, MJ um, had to kind of bow out on it because she had a she had a really bad cold and wasn't feeling very well. So I think she still hasn't quite finished it, but but I have and I had a lot of fun with it. So it's a uh, it's about the character of Vasquez, who you may remember from the movie Aliens. So it starts off with her um, kind of induction into into the Marine Corps and a bit about her background and things like that, which is which was really well done. Um, it then you you discover that she's had two children who've been taken away from her for adoption and, and are living with her, her sister, um, and it becomes about their lives. And, and one of them, the, the female um, of the so they're twins. So the girl twin ends up joining the Marines. Um, the boy twin ends up joining uh, Wayland Utani, the big evil corporation from the Aliens movies, um, and there's a, there's a load of stuff involving involving xenomorphs and things like that going on as well as you'd expect. Um, so yeah, it was a it was a fun uh, a fun take on the Aliens franchise. Um, Castro, I think, is a really good writer, um, as you'd expect from her. She kind of infuses this book with a lot of um, stuff about you know kind of Latinx culture and, and things like that. Um, so it was, yeah, there was a lot that was really entertaining. There was one thing that, that slightly annoyed me about this book, which is there's just loads of references to 80s culture, like loads of them. And it's supposed to be set in like 21 something. Yeah, so, so a long way from the 1980s. So it felt a bit bizarre that all these characters were obsessed with Bruce Springsteen and things like that. Um, but aside from that, a really entertaining read. The middle middle section may be a bit longer than it needed to be, and the end may be not quite as, as suspenseful and exciting as it could have been. Um, but overall, um, definitely an entertaining read, and, and definitely glad that I read it. Okay, just ahead of that then, uh, we have Spectre by Stephen Law. So this I read for uh, Kelly Hooked on Books' From Hell Book Club. Uh, where we're reading kind of vintage uh, horror paperbacks. So this was my pick, uh, and it was a lot of fun. So I've read Stephen Laws before and enjoyed him. Um, this book is about um, this group of friends um, who grew up together, um, and there is now kind of weird stuff going on. So they start dying off, um, and it's about, as you kind of expect, there's something that happened in their past, um, that relates to it and it's about them you know the, the remaining characters trying to figure out what's going on um, some really scary scenes some really suspenseful scenes um, some quite disturbing scenes so it definitely comes with some trigger warnings um, but I did I did really enjoy it overall okay just ahead of that then uh, we have one of the books that I um, that I wasn't expecting to read in the month, but ended up reading. Uh, so that was Burglars Can't Be Choosers by Lawrence Block. So just a really fun crime novel. So I've done a I've done a review of it, which will go up on the channel. Uh, will will have gone up on the channel by the time you're watching this, actually. Um, so this is about a um, a burglar, Bernie Rodenbar, who gets hired to burgle an apartment, and things go completely awry. Um, and it's about him trying to um, trying to. Um, unpick the situation and, and get himself out of trouble basically and understand what what has happened and why it's happened um, so a, a fun mystery at the center of it um, some nice kind of comic writing Lawrence Block's just a, a really good writer and this is very different from a lot of his other books um, but really worked well for me and I'm, I'm looking forward to reading more books in that series um, ahead of that a crime book which could not have been more different uh, 1974 by David Peace um, one of the most disturbing books I've read for a while um, and obviously I'm doing this project where I'm deliberately reading disturbing books this is a book that was not part of that project and it was far more disturbing than many of the books that are in that project 
So a, um, a crime novel set in the north of the UK uh, in the 70s um, about a, a series of uh, like disappearances of young girls um, and a, a newspaper journalist who's investigating that. So yeah, some really grim and horrible stuff in this book but some really interesting themes as well. And it just hang, hung, hung together fantastically as a novel. Um, again, it's the first in the series, so I'm looking forward to reading further books in that series. Um, after that then, so we are into the top three now. Um, so at number three, we have The Haunting of Hill House by Shirley Jackson. So this is a book I've read before. This was a read for my Berthier Book Club that I run, where we read uh, books from the, the that were published in the birth years of, of people who've either done my Berthier Book Tag on Booktube or just part of the group that are doing these reads, so people in my Discord and things like that. Um, so The Haunting of Hill House, just a fantastic haunted house novel told with such a... Uh, such skill um, that it really leaves you thinking about it after you've finished it. So it's one of those books where you never really know if there was actually a haunting or if it's in the imaginations of the characters. So um, about a, um, a kind of psychologist who gets together in a small group of people to stay in an apparently haunted house just to see what happens, basically. Um, absolutely fantastic great characters some really scary scenes um, and as I say this overwhelming sense of kind of mis mystery and and uh, um, kind of other otherworldly uncanniness I suppose I'd say um, so yeah fantastic and, and not hard to see why it's so so well respected um, just ahead of that another classic horror uh, horror book oh, I can't call it a novel because it's not uh, so The King in Yellow by Robert W. Chambers. So this is one that loads of people recommended to me. Um, it comes in a... So there's a collection of short stories which is available, known as, and, uh, you know, and titled The King in Yellow. There are ten stories in that. I only read the first five. Um, and indeed, the first four are the ones that are, uh, you know, considered to be the ones that relate to The King in Yellow. So The King in Yellow is a, a fictional play um, that... Uh, sends people who read or see it performed insane um, and there are the first four stories in this collection all relate to that in some way um, I think I'm going to do a review of those four stories because there's just something wonderfully eerie and uncanny about them um, that I found deeply affecting there's just so much going on particularly in the first story there's so many different concepts and things like that flying around um, and there's this real sense of of otherworldliness so this is a, an old book as well so it's published towards the end of the 19th century um but yeah really really effective i really liked it um, a hell of a lot um so my favorite book of the month then so another haunted house book very different from the haunted Hill house probably couldn't be more different from the haunted Hill house um, and that is uh, How to Sell a Haunted House by Grady hendrix so this was a buddy read for me with one of my patrons um and it was just a fantastic read. So, so enjoyable. So a wonderful, um, a wonderful, I'm trying to think how to describe it. So a wonderful blend of, of comedy and horror. So Grady Hendrix is someone who really gets horror. He gets what's effective in horror. And what he does brilliantly in this book, and I'll talk more about this in the review I did of it, but he's used horror tropes that we've seen before but kind of twist them slightly and just just get the most out of them so a story about um a, a woman who whose parents die she has to go back to kind of clear out their house she's got a, a, a somewhat difficult relationship with her brother um and her mother was an obsessive collector of like dolls and puppets and things like that so the house is full of those so you can kind of see where the where the kind of horror aspects come in um but yeah just really gripping really exciting um, very funny at times, quite moving at times. I had an absolutely great time with it. Um, so thank you very much to my patron, Mariah, who picked that as our, um, as our buddy read. I had an absolutely fantastic time with it. Okay, time for a random book from the shelves. And today's is, well, kind of not really a book, actually, because it's a magazine. It is a cult detective magazine. So um, I've got a few of these that were sent to me by the publisher, Dave Brzezinski. Uh, so thanks again, Dave. Um, they're really entertaining. So just uh, as the title suggests, a, um, a a magazine that is dedicated to stories, uh, uh, stories about and articles about occult detective so articles on occult detective fiction um, as well as short stories and just consistently entertaining um, and definitely worth checking out if you like that kind of thing 
So I hope you enjoyed that. Let me know what you get up to in February reading wise. Um, let me know if you read any of the books I talked about and what you thought of them. Um, and as always, thank you very much for watching. Hope you're safe and well out there. Hope you're really good stuff. And I'll speak to you again very soon. Cheerio.